Hi, Sig Bowman here. Welcome to my video lesson for Wolfpack's track Corey Wong, live at Madison Square Gardens. So much I love the original studio track, this live version is a bit more up-tempo, a bit rawer. I really like it, but of course there are a lot of similarities with the original. Let's have a little listen. Okay, so I'm going to go through the track pretty quickly, just have a look at the main riffs and show you how to play them. As always, there is a link below to the PDF transcription, so get yourself a copy of that if you want to study it in more detail. If you do enjoy the video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. There's also links below to my Facebook and Instagram pages, it would be great to have you following me on there too. And also there's a link to a donation page. Okay, let's zoom in and we'll get started with the lesson. Okay, for this track we are in the key of F. F major, pretty much, but with a dominant 7 or a flat 7. So you could think of it as F mixolydian. It's pretty much what we're using. Very similar to the studio version, there's a couple of different parts. And we've got two guitar parts, we've got Corey playing one, and we've got Jack Stratton, the drummer and band leader from Wolfpack, a very talented guy, is actually playing the guitar on this. It's another great example of two guitars playing different parts together in a kind of funk setting. So a lot you can learn from this. Really cool riffs and they're relatively simple to play. Okay, let's start off by having a look at the intro riff that Corey's playing. First thing to note is on my notation, you'll notice I'm doing my scratches a bit differently now. I've been very lucky to have a bit of insight into how Corey is playing some of this rhythm stuff. And you can actually see it on the video if you watch the video from Madison Square Garden on how he has some different kind of techniques for playing funk. When we get to the middle section, on the video you can see Corey doing his kind of what he calls this helicopter hand which is what a lot of us do when we're playing funk, where your right hand is constantly going, you're either hitting the chord, or you're hitting a scratch, or you're not hitting at all and you're resting, you're just keeping this going as a metronome. So you can see Corey doing that in the video quite clearly. But for the other parts of the song in this intro, he's actually using his right hand percussively to hit the bottom strings. So that's what I'm trying to notate with those two little scratches that you can see below on the tablature. So for this part, we're not going like this. We're hitting the bottom string, bottom few strings, muted. If you want it to sound like Corey, good luck. I can't do it. But give it a real, give it a thump, and then we're hitting these two notes on the top two strings. So a fourth fret on your B string, first fret on your E string. Again, playing F here. So we've got the F and the dominant seven together. Gives that lovely clashy sound. And so, and then there's two more of those. So watch the video of him playing it, he's not really moving his right hand that much, it's mostly just... On YouTube you can slow it down, some good shots you can get of him playing it. He's kind of doing that. It's those first two beats. As I say, I can't really do it. I'm not sure how he does it and keeps that time going, but that's what gives him his unique sound. But have a go at it yourself and see what you can come up with. And then we're playing the first fret on your D string four times. Again the dominant seventh the octave, the E flat, within F, but we're not playing it like that. The first three are very muted, almost like scratches, and the last one you're playing it quite accented, like that. It's not difficult to play in terms of notes, getting that feel and sound of it is what is difficult. You're going for that kind of softer, and then on the last one getting that accent. And then we have a, just the same thing again. And then we repeat the first bar. And then you're just gonna slide up from your first fret to your third fret. And then Corey's kind of putting a scratch. And then 
slide down. And then he's hitting the bottom. You can hear the open E string. It's got going back into the riff, just keeps going around. So that slide down. And again, a muted bottom E string. That just keeps going around. Really cool funky riff, not many notes in it, it's all about the timing and the feel of it and getting those scratches in the right place. So halfway through that, Jack then comes in with... Which is kind of the iconic riff that everybody knows. I always thought Corey was playing that until I saw the video. So this is very similar to Limited World. Kind of same chord shapes, which I did a lesson on, so you can check out that as well. So the main chord we're playing here... So in the past, in the limited world, I called this an F11 chord, which technically it is, in terms of the, if you were to work out the notes that are in there, they're all part of an F11. But I have very good authority that Corey doesn't call it that. He kind of uses the triads and the slash chords. Um, so to him, I think this would be a, an E flat major over an F. So the bass note is playing that F. This note on the top is the ninth or sus two. It's technically an E sus two or ninth. Cool sound of chord. But to start off with, we're just gonna drop this first finger down on the B string, which gives it a nice clash. So you could say that's a flat five with an E flat. Personally, I would again call this an F nine chord. You've got the seventh, you've got the ninth, you've got the third, and you've got the F, the root. But it doesn't really matter what you call them, it's just being able to play them. So, starting it off with a stab on that chord and then moving your first finger up. So the timing is still the same as what we've got down here. One and two and three. Doing the same here. One and two and three. And then it repeats four times. And then next bar you play that four times again. Mirroring what Cory is doing. Repeat again. And then we're sliding up. So this is an F7 chord, dominant 7, which we've already talked about. It's kind of what we're playing here, which is sliding up from a fret below. Top three or four strings. It's a 12th fret bar with your second finger on the 13th fret of your G string. Slide it up to the 13th fret with the 14th fret on your G string. And that's it. Just like that. Again, it's getting that timing, because if you're not getting the, that's not perfectly in time. I know this when I was recording it myself. If you don't get it perfectly in time, it sounds pretty horrendous. Same with the one down the bottom. It's all about practicing it. Play it with the metronome, play it along with the original track, and get it nice and tight. Nice and crisp as well. Then we go into the kind of the, the bridge section. Which is just these three chords. So you've got an A flat seven. Sounds to me like they're hammering on. Minor third to the major third here on your G string, so. Like that. Move up to a B flat seven. Up to a D flat seven. And then the live version, Joe plays a funky little lick, which I've also transcribed just for a bit of fun on here. So that lick here. up on this D flat seven up here D flat seven here we're kind of playing around with the pentatonic scale there nice and snappy make sure the rests come out and then he's repeating it up the octave finishing up on the 11th fret on your B string and then back into the main riff so if you want to learn that it's a pretty cool lick is in the transcription so you can have a go it all pretty much then repeats through the verse sections. There are some very slight variations in the rhythm um, and how they're playing it. I'm not gonna go through all that. That's just getting a bit obsessive. However, it is all in the transcription if you want to go through it. Okay, and then we've got the first breakdown, which sounds a bit like this. Repeating round and round. So again, we're in this F shape. I think it'd be pentatonic, we're just using these three notes. Throw in the second fret in there at 
times as well. Again, it's all about the rhythm, getting those scratches in, watch Corey playing it. Again, he's hitting those bottom strings. It's not a kind of scratching. It's that kind of thing. So again, quite simple to play in terms of notes. It's getting that rhythm and the timing. Bit like that. The main thing is to get that percussive chugging going along with it. And then Jack comes in with kind of a harmony line. So this is all in G string. Second fret, third fret. And he's pretty much putting a scratch between each one. And then before he moves to each one, he's putting an open G in. But it's all very muted with your palm. On its own, doesn't sound very much, but you put the two of them together, and it sounds really cool when that comes in. Then after a while, Corey goes to this. Again, this is where we do have the kind of helicopter hand going. Scratching those notes when you're not playing. Putting the pressure down on the beats that you want to. So we're playing an F dominant seven again. So you kind of got this triangle shape here. Eight, seven, eight. Or eight, seven, eight, depending on how you want to finger it. On your A, D and G string. Sliding into it from a fret below. Initially sliding into it, as Corey does, those big slides, and then you're just putting it down a fret. In terms of the rhythm, first one you're holding, give it a bit of vibrato as well, so you're holding that for one E and, and then on the fourth sixteenth note, you have the upstroke. Couple of scratches. And then repeats, but with scratches in between. So it's pretty much that same kind of rhythm. Again, he's mixing it up in different bars, so you can have a play around with it and do your own thing, but it sounds pretty cool, that rhythm going. It's quite hard to make make out what Jack's playing at this point, but it sounded a bit like... something like that on the bottom. E string, get quite muted, staccato, first fret, open E, first fret and then... and then he's bending up. Third fret's kind of even, not even a half tone. Quarter tone bend up there. He's putting a few slides in as well. So have a listen to what he's playing and look at the tablature, see if you can work it out. But it does sound good along with what Corey is playing. And after that section, we end up back with the, the three dominant seven chords. But this third time, instead of it being Joe playing a lick, we have Corey going like that one of his kind of signature things. So, what we've got here, in terms of the chords, starting off with the B dominant seven, so this shape here, if you know your D7, D major, D7, it's so this shape, but we're moving it all the way up, so you've got the B in the bass, or you would have the B in the bass, we're not actually playing it here. So B dominant seven, Moving it up a semitone, ending up, which is that chord we're playing here, which is D flat dominant seven, is what we're ending up with. So chord wise, fairly simple, it's the rhythm, and what we're doing here is triplet sixteenth notes. So you're playing three sixteenth notes in the space of two sixteenth notes. Very similar to how we do Eighth note triplets, if you know that, where you play instead of one and two and you go one, two, three, two, two, three. So within the space of each eighth note, you're getting three sixteenth notes. So he starts off just playing the first beat, one, 
playing that once and then on one hand you're going to go kind of sliding up halfway through this. You could play it without moving in the middle of the triplets. You could play it like that, but he sounds when I listen to it, he's actually sliding up halfway through. Like that. It's not easy to do. Your hand is used to playing straight 16th notes, not triplets. So it's a good exercise maybe to practice with a metronome, playing the triplets possibly do a video on this at some point when I do my Funk Fundamentals course eventually. Normally if you were thinking one and two and three and four and for your sixteenth notes you're now doing one and two and three and four. That kind of rhythm. And then finishing the bar with an open E and slide down like that. into the main riff. Corey does those kind of triplets quite a lot, so it's a good thing, good technique to work on. You can try it on any notes, any chords. Okay, then we come to kind of like the outro part, or the string section as they call it, which it sounds like they're both just very much vamping away and jamming here. Corey's part's going a bit like this. Again, we're using this F kind of pentatonic. Starting off. Very similar to that Joe Dart lick that we looked at. Which was in D flat, this is an F. Various variations of that, some scratching going on, all sounds pretty cool. At the same time, Jack is playing. Or variations of that. So again, we're up at the F up here. The F7 the minor third and hammering on the major third. A lot of scratching. And up to the 15th fret. That kind of thing. And then occasionally I'm putting in the 13, 15, 16. Again, I would say it's implying that B flat, 7. Not a lot of structure going on there, it's just some serious vamping going on. Keep the scratching going and you're hitting those chords. But again, sounds very cool as a counterpoint to what Corey's playing. Then goes back to the. Section and finishes up with it. And that's the track finished. Very funky and a lot of fun to play. So I hope you enjoy learning this. So I will play through the Guitar Pro tablature now so you can see how that looks and sounds. But if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Okay, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon with another video.